In this video, I will show you how to create beautiful parallax background effects in WordPress by using the Seedprod WordPress website builder. It's quick and easy to do and offers a fantastic look to your pages that will catch the user's eye. Let's get started. So to start, I have a clean installation of WordPress and I have Seedprod installed, which you can see here on the left hand side. If you need help getting or installing Seedprod, I'll leave a link in the description below to another video that will help you with that. And the next window that I have here is an image that we're going to be using. So we're going to take this image and I'm going to show you how to break it into two images so that we can use it for the parallax effect on the hero section. So what I'm going to do is cut this bottom section out inside of Affinity Photo. It's a program like Photoshop. You can use Photoshop or GIMP or any image editor that has the features to cut out images. We're going to save the bottom part as a transparent PNG. So you'll see this bottom part and then it'll be transparent above it right here. And then we're going to also cut out the top part here just for the background. Now for the background, you could actually use any image. You could replace the sky behind here because we're going to cut this out. Then you could put whatever you want behind here. You could technically put a blue sky or anything you want at all. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to maximize this and I'm going to copy this. And I'm just going to paste that inside of Affinity Photo. So here we go, we have our photo here now and I can see it. And on the left hand side, we want to select the freehand selection tool. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. There we go, we can adjust this. And I'm gonna cut a line right across here that goes across the whole way. And then we're gonna circle down around it and extract this part of the photo. Let's go ahead and we'll carefully do this. It doesn't have to be perfect. The more careful you are, you'll probably get a more crisp picture, but I'm just gonna brush this a little bit just for this demonstration, just so you can understand the process of creating this. And you can mix and match any type of photos. It doesn't have to be what I'm doing. So you could maybe do maybe a forest in the background, uh, whatever you want to do, you can get creative with it. You can do it with water. So different types of ocean effects would be kind of interesting as well. So there we go. We drew around here. So now what we want to do, I need to just rasterize this and then I can cut this piece out. Now I'm going to select file and new from clipboard. And now we have that piece that we just extracted here. It looks like I cut out a little bit here. I'm just going to smudge that back so we can't see that. Great, now my edges are a little bit jaggy here, so I just want to smooth that out. So all I'm gonna do is take the eraser tool. I'm gonna to make sure it's a nice small size like this, and it doesn't have to be a full flow or hardness. And I'm just gonna drag that right across the edge here just to smooth it out just a little bit so it's not too jaggy looking here. So I'll go right across. And there we go, just this last side right here on the right side. Like I mentioned before, I'd probably take my time a little bit more to make this look a little bit nicer. Okay, for this first photo, we're going to go File and Export. And I want to export it as a PNG file. This will keep that transparent background so we can put an image behind it on the website. So go ahead and save that file. And I left that about 2,000 pixels wide. You can change that if you like. And I'm just going to come back to this photo. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And I just want to select the top part here. And we'll take this space and sky here. And then I'll just do the same thing and cut this out. New from clipboard. And I'll save this one actually as a JPEG. Just because the file size will be a little bit smaller. So the PNG will be 2.93 megabyte for my picture. If I go to JPEG at 100%, it'll be 1.73. I usually bring this down around 70 or 75%. And you can see that file size is now 475 KB. So it's dramatically smaller. And now we'll go ahead and export this and save it. And now we're back in WordPress here. And on the left-hand side, we have the media library. Let's go ahead to media and add new. And I'm just gonna drag those two photos here and I'll drop them in and it'll upload here. So we have the camp PNG and then the background here as well. Let's go to seed broad and we can either create a new landing page or we can create a new theme in the theme builder. Let's just create a landing page for now. So either one doesn't matter. Add new landing page. And I'm just gonna select a blank template here for this example. Let's hit the check mark and I'll just call this hero and we'll save and start editing the page. Great, so here we can see we have our section. That's the purple part here that is surrounding this area. Let's put one row. And in this top row, I'm actually gonna put some hero text. So we'll need a second row to actually put our PNG inside of it. So let's just do a single row underneath here. And we can add that image right here at the bottom. So let's go to blocks and then we'll look for the image and we'll just drag that image right in here. Let's go ahead and select this and use your own image. Now in your media library, we'll select that PNG file that we got and we'll hit select and that'll add it here down to the bottom. The next is we want the stars in the background. So let's go ahead and we'll select this and we'll add this as a background image to the section here. Let's use your own image and we'll select the stars here and hit select. So now what we need to do is get this image to span the full width of our page here. So to do that, we can select the row. That's the blue row here, not the orange block. And once that's selected, you can come down to row width and we want to change this from fixed width to full screen. That'll bring it all the way across. Now we do have some spacing here. So first let's select the block here and we'll go under advanced 
spacing. We'll change all of that padding to zero. We'll change the margin to zero as well, even though I don't think there's any on that. We'll just do that just to be safe. Next, we can do that to the row. And I don't think this will affect it either. Let's come under spacing. But just to be safe, let's put zero on all of that. Now I know the column inside of the row. So this is one row. We also have the column. So you can have multiple columns inside of a row. We just have one. You can click this cog wheel in the top right corner of the row to access the column. You can see it says COL up here instead of row. And then we can come under advanced, spacing, and margin, and then zero padding, which has a little bit applied to it. And then lastly, we have the actual section as well, which is the outermost container. So we'll select that purple section, come under advanced, spacing. We'll add zero, zero, and then you can see there's 10. We'll actually just get rid of that. So now we can see that this spawns the full width of, across and there's no spacing on any of the sides. So great, now we have a couple options of adding some space in here for the height. So one easy way is just to look for the spacer block and we can just put this right in between here and we can select this block and this is the whole job of it. It's just the height of the element. So we can just put some space in between, let's say maybe 400 and let's go ahead and save and preview this. And there you go, you can already see the page is coming together, but we can't scroll down to show the effect yet. So underneath this section, I'm going to add a new section. You can select it down here at the bottom. Just one column's fine. And I'm going to change the background color just to black. And we can take that spacer and we can drop that right inside of this new section. Now when we select this, we can just put a bunch of space here. This will allow us to scroll down the page. I'll just set this to say a thousand. Now typically you would have more content down here, like your sections and whatever you want to have on your website. Let's go ahead and save this and preview again. And now we can scroll down. So here you have the basics put in place for this effect. So let's do two things. First, let's add our text in here. So let's look for a headline and we'll just drag that in here. Let's select that and we'll change the text color to white so that we can see it. All right, let's update our text here and we'll change that font size. So we'll make that a little bit bigger and we can change under advanced topography. We can change the font family. Great. So there we go. Now, if you don't want it at the top of the page, that's fine. What you could do is select this spacer and change this to say 200. And then you could select the text under advanced spacing and margin. And then you could put that 200 at the top here. Now you have the spacer of 200 and then you have 200 margin pushing this down here. So now that looks like it's centered in the middle of the black sky here. So there we go, that's looking pretty good. Now we need to get the effect on the scroll here and that's very easy to do. All we have to do is select the section with the background on it and we can go to background position and we want full screen cover, but we want the image to be fixed. So that'll stick there and it won't move when we scroll up and down the page. Let's go ahead and save and preview. And now when we scroll down, you can see that that image stays there while the other image for the PNG goes up and down the page. And it gives you that very cool parallax effect. Let me know in the comments if you found this helpful and if you plan on using this effect. If you do, let me know what your idea is. I'd love to hear from you. Now that you know how to create beautiful parallax background effects in WordPress, maybe you'd like to check out these videos on creating a Disney Plus website clone or a Spotify website clone. By the end of these videos, you'll be well on your way to creating incredible websites. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.